If you're gonna use Ableton Live on stage, then you've got to have a MIDI controller. It's gonna help you not look like you're checking your email on stage, and it's also gonna keep you in the moment. It's gonna keep you focused on the music and give you control over your computer without being focused and hunched over your laptop. So what we're gonna do in the next few videos is talk about the best MIDI controllers based on position. Whatever role you play in the band, whatever you, uh, role you play in the production and performance of live music, we're gonna talk about the best MIDI controllers for you. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about the five best MIDI controllers for live performance for guitar players in 2022. So all of these are gonna be foot controllers that you can control with your feet, no hands necessary. Uh, and I'm going to share my five favorite MIDI foot controllers in this video. Now, before we get into it each week, I've got to share a joke making fun of that individual player because that's just the right thing to do. So today's joke is how do you get a guitar player to slow down? You put a lead sheet in front of them. And with that, let's get to our very first controller. So number five of the five best MIDI controllers in 2022 is the OG Behringer FCB 1010. Now I'm pretty sure this MIDI controller is about 85 years old now. Um, and it is a beast. It's $149. That's incredibly, incredibly inexpensive. And there's tons of control over it. Now I've got to say this MIDI controller holds a special place in my heart uh, because this is the first MIDI controller I ever bought. And in fact, I went out to the garage before I started this video and I thought, let's bring this guy in. It weighs about 9,000 pounds, uh, but this thing has held up um, it, it, for such a long time. I mean, I'm trying to remember when I got this and I, it must've been, I think 2008. I've had it since then. Um, this is a great MIDI foot controller. There's tons of buttons. There's tons of, uh, things you can program it to do. The expression pedals are great for fading in and out volumes. And I've set this up in multiple ways to where, uh, you know, basically buttons are really simple. Play, stop, next, previous. I've had it navigate through session view to launch individual clips. And then based on which bank I'm in on the controller, then the volume pedal uh, is associated with different things. There's so much flexibility in programming this. Uh, I will say there are some really great apps that help you program a lot easier than when I got started with this. Um, but I do think if you get this, uh, you should suffer through the process of trying to program it directly on the controller itself. It's kind of a rite of passage. You should learn how to do it and figure out the right exact incantation to call this up and to change it to MIDI notes from program changes. It's a great, great MIDI controller. Uh, on the back of it, we do a five pin. We have a lot of different um, uh, connectivity, different switches that we can add to it. We have those expression pedals. Uh, and again, this thing is giant. Uh, it's got multiple banks, 10 different banks of presets and um, uh, 10 different edible presets with each button. And again, you can get really creative with this and really expressive, but um, I, I still love the Behringer FCB 1010, particularly if you're a guitar player, it's a great uh, controller to have sitting at your feet. The next one is the uh, Soft Step 2 by Keith McMillan Instruments. Now I did also go to the garage and pull out my Soft Step 1, which is a still a great mini controller. These controllers are great. They're, they're kind of deceptively powerful. And what I mean by that is they look very simple. Uh, they don't have um, the uh, kind of hard controller that you'll see in a lot of uh, the, these other controllers, hard switches, kind of like an effect pedal. And that truthfully drives some guitar players crazy. I get that. But what's really crazy about these, you'll see um, uh, they, the top row here is raised up, so it's a little easier to access. But they're pressure sensitive. Uh, each one of these pedals can perform uh, multiple things. There's different bangs on it. Um, it's got a USB connection that both powers it and, um, and sends USB MIDI in and out. Uh, you see it's, uh, uh, you can send up to six messages per key. So note CC, pitch bend, program change, um, MMC or OSC controls. Um, again, so, so much stuff there. You can also get their MIDI, uh, what do they call it? The MIDI expander. Yeah. MIDI expander. If you need five pin, uh, that you can connect in that expander port right there. Uh, if you need five pin on it, but these controllers are really, really crazy. Again, I said, they're kind of deceptively, um, uh, powerful because they look really simple. They look cute. They're super lightweight. I mean, again, compared to the FCB 1010, uh, this practically weighs nothing. Um, but what's great about them is they're super flexible. So if you're doing tracks, but you're also also maybe controlling effects in Ableton Live. Uh, if you, you know, for instance, want to make it to where as you, you know, press harder on a pedal, it's going to increase the effect amount um, on a maybe a vocal effect or something. This is a really great solution for that. So if you're looking for 
a MIDI controller that does more than just trigger things, uh, then the Soft Step 2 is a great solution. Now, this next controller, our third MIDI controller for guitar players, is one that I personally have never used, but I have a lot of from studios to stage students that have used this particular controller, as well as a lot of other controllers by this company, and that's the Morningstar MC8 MIDI controller. Uh, now, what I like about this is it has both five pin and USB connectivity. Uh, you have the ex expression pedal and MIDI outs uh, that you can connect to different things here. Um, it's got the, the screen uh, that makes it really easy to see what you've got different features programmed to. There's different banks, a lot of different things. Uh, it says 30 uh, dual page banks of eight switches. So uh, 480 programmable preset slots. Uh, if you add a external aux switch, that's up to 660. So there's more programming ability here and more buttons than you'll ever, ever need to do this. Um, and it's a very well-built controller. And again, I've heard from a lot of students that have had um, other Morningstar things have the MCA and they just absolutely love it. So that's a great solution as a guitar player. Now, if you're looking for a dead simple controller, uh, very easy to use, you just kind of plug it in and go. The Loop to Miss by Loop Community is a great solution. We mentioned this in our previous video. This kind of falls in the lineage of the Ability Foot Controller. It's modeled after that. Uh, the Disaster Area Designs DMC60, which was uh, would have made this list, but they're no longer making it, at least at the time of this video, which is unfortunate because that's a great controller. Uh, but the Loop to Miss is, kind of falls in the lineage of uh, the Ability Foot Controller. And it's just dead simple. You see the buttons that you have here. Um, it's uh, USB powered, so you plug that into your computer. You also have a five pin out that uh, you could connect if you want to. Uh, and you have 20 banks and uh, nine buttons in each of those banks, which is really cool. And 16 channels, but MIDI is 16 channels, so that's kind of marketing speak. But um, a lot of great, uh, a lot of great friends use the Loop to Miss. A lot of people I know um, have it and love it. Uh, I've used it before. And again, what's nice about this, uh, let's actually go back to this picture because it's a little easier to see if you look here. The switches on this just feel like a, a effect pedal, right? You're used to um, the feel of this as a guitar player putting your feet on a, a effect. And so it's a really, really um, great pedal for that. And again, if you're just looking for something simple to control tracks, then the Loop to Miss is great. But we're down to number one. The number one best MIDI controller for a guitar player in 2022. And in fact, it's right over my head right there. That's the Oakboard Floor Vista. This is created by my buddy, uh, Jeff Kaler over at Oak Tone. Um, and you may be looking at this and going, Will, you've shown us a few MIDI controllers that have like 9,000 buttons. Like the, the FCB 1010 has, you know, who knows how many buttons. The MC8 said it had 660 buttons and the Floor Vista has four buttons. And you're going, Will, have you lost your mind? Um, why are you suggesting this MIDI controller? Well, a couple of reasons. Uh, Jeff has made this incredibly powerful, but incredibly, incredibly simple. One, it's very well built. Um, it's powered by USB. So let's see if I can get out of here and show you a picture of this. Uh, so you plug in a USB cable on the back side of this. Um, the the uh, actual switches are really, really high quality. So they feel great. Uh, each one of these lights up, which is great. Uh, so that makes it really easy to see on, on stage. You can pre uh, reprogram these buttons to be anything you want it to, to be. And you can reprogram just directly from Ableton Live, just sending it MIDI notes. Again, Jeff has spent so much time on making something that's very powerful, very, very simple. Um, and you can just use this with Ableton Live as is. But here's where the power really comes in, is you have this screen in the middle of it, and this screen is going to tie into Jeff's plugin, Taz Lite or Taz Pro. And what's really nice about this is you can load in Taz Lite and load that into Ableton Live. It's gonna read all the locators in your set, and then you're gonna get a visual indication of your set list at your feet. So you can, again, the goal is having our MIDI controller and, and not staring at our computer and not being involved with our computer. Have your computer side of stage, way far out of the way, um, and just look down at your feet and you can see your set list. You can go next, previous to jump through songs. Uh, and then when you're ready to, you can select that song and start playing that song. And this pedal is going to connect to Taz, which is then going to control your Ableton Live set. It's a really elegant solution. In fact, uh, a couple months ago, Lee from Studio to Stage Student, she reached out and she said, hey, I need a way to move my computer off stage and use my um, uh, basically control tracks, but not have my computer next to me. But I want to stay focused in the moment. I want to be able to see the set list and see what's happening. And Lee went with the Oakboard Floor Vista um, as a great solution to uh, to see the set list, but then also control Ableton Live. And again, really, really simply at your feet. And so I love the Floor Vista. It's a really awesome solution. But I want to 
Before we wrap up here, I want to share one final suggestion that I would highly suggest. Now, all five of these mini controllers are really great, um, but I want to share something that I actually shared with Lee that I think could be helpful to you. If you're in a scenario where you're going to have your MIDI foot controller and you need Ableton Live to be across stage. Maybe uh, the computer is going to sit with your drummer or maybe it's going to sit side of stage with your playback deck, um, but your MIDI controller is going to be at your feet. What you do not want to do is buy a USB extender from Amazon, plug your controller into that, and then run a super long USB cable across stage. You do not want to do that. What you want to do instead is buy this guy. This is the Mio XM from iConnectivity. Uh, the folks at iConnectivity are really great friends. They make really great products. Uh, full disclosure, I do do some work with them from time to time. And so uh, I do get paid from them, but um, I still recommend their gear because I love it, right? Um, uh, they're great friends, but they make really, really great gear. Uh, here's how you would use the Mio XM. So if we look at the front of this, actually, let's go to the back here. You'll see this USB uh, MIDI host port. You would plug in your uh, Oakboard Floor Vista or whatever MIDI controller you have that's USB into this, it's gonna power your controller. As long as it can be powered over USB, it'll still power it here. And then on the front of the device, you have this RTP MIDI port. You're gonna plug in an ethernet cable from the Mio XM and then connect the other end of that ethernet cable to your computer that's running Ableton Live or connect it to a network switch and then connect your computer to that network switch as well too. And here's the big picture of this. I can press a button on my uh, my foot controller, my floor vista, and that's gonna go to the Mio XM, which is then gonna go over the ethernet cable, which is then gonna go into Ableton Live. But the beauty of this is that ethernet cable can change length. So it could be a 15 foot ethernet cable, or you could go do a festival date where you're gonna be 200 feet away from wherever your computer is, and you just run a long enough ethernet cable, and it's going to carry that MIDI message from your MIDI controller to your Ableton Live consistently, and is gonna work every single time. Now, the Mio XM with the Play Audio 12 and forget about it. It's even crazier, but that's a whole nother conversation for a whole nother day. So that's a look at the five best mini controllers for live performance for guitar players in 2022. That's a mouthful of a title. Um, I've included links to all of these in the description of this video. But even going further than that, if you want links to uh, all of my suggestions for gear, from um, uh, MIDI interfaces to MIDI controllers to audio interfaces to in-ears, all sorts of things, then head to fromstudiotostage.com slash gear. You can download my free gear guide. And again, you'll get all of my suggestions for gear, including live streaming gear uh, that I use often that, again, as I often say, has been road tested and mothered approved. You know it's going to work. You know it's going to hold up. Uh, and it's going to work uh, very, very well for what you're looking to do. So again, if you want access to that completely free, head to fromstudiostage.com slash gear. And if not, I will see you next week as, I, as we continue our conversation looking at the best MIDI controllers for live performance in 2022. Take care, everybody. See you next week. 10 a.m. Central. Bye.